on language and the brain. Ever since the second half of the 19th century, we know that language is controlled by a specific uh, network in the brain. But the real question now is whether the rules of language are controlled by the brain or if they are just the result of an arbitrary and cultural artifacts. Uh, to answer this question, one can concentrate on syntax, which, so to speak, would be considered as the fingerprints of the human mind, namely the capacity to generate infinite sentences from a finite set of words. Now, let's focus uh, on a very simple question, which is the following. Um, why are there rules that never appear in the languages of the world, although they are conceivable and they are coherent? And let's call them impossible rules and correspondingly impossible languages. More specifically, why are there no rules in no language in the world that are based on the linear order of words on a sentence? So, for example, although we can have rules that permute uh, locally words like in uh, Rome is beautiful, is Rome beautiful, there is never a rule that can permute entirely the whole set of words of a sentence beside trivial cases. Uh, the reason for the existence of impossible rules and impossible languages has been a, a tantalizing question for many, many years. Neuroimaging nowadays offers uh, the possibility to see which networks in the brain are activated uh, while prefer performing a certain activity and allow us to offer um, a, new quest a new answer to this tantalizing question. The crucial step was to construe artificial grammars containing easy and conceivable but impossible rules and teach them to experimental subjects. Uh, without any instructions, the brain of the subject recognized them, recognized the impossible rules with respect to the possible one. But when treating the impossible rules, the brain partially inhibited uh, the natural uh, linguistic network and used other parts of the brain. The inevitable conclusion in this case is that the boundaries of Babel, so to speak, which is the limit uh, within which uh, the rules can vary for all languages, are not cultural and artificial artifacts or conventional one, but they are rather imposed by the brain structure. Now, if uh, this theory, is, this proofs are correct, are leading to uh, correct answers, now there are at least uh, two major consequences that one can uh, derive from this result. First, the very fact that all children can acquire any language with no significant difference in the amount of time and without making random errors, which a statistical approach would uh, necessarily lead to, uh, shows that the children must be endowed by a common biological guide which precedes any experience and allows them to converge to the grammar in a, the same amount of time, doing the similar kind of errors in all languages. And second, if languages are biologically determined, and if syntax, the way we know it, as a, fine, as a way to generate infinite sentences from a finite set of words, uh, is an exclusive property of humans, as it result it is, then it must be the case that evolution endowed us, endowed all humans, with some biologically determined singularity yet to be discovered. Well, synthesizing when it comes to the question of the relationship between the brain and language, and more specifically, the relationship between the brain and syntax, the fingerprint of human mind, we can conclude that impossible languages exist for biological reasons, and they are determined by the uh, architectural neurobiological structure of the brain. They, acquire, they allow children to acquire a language with a reasonable, within a reasonable amount of time, and they highlight the substantial equality of all human languages, the present ones, the ones of the past, and the ones of the future.